can get to, uh, and then everything works together and it'll, it'll stay in place? Uh, my recollection is that it's an unstable equilibrium. So if you put, in principle, if you put it exactly at L2, uh, and you had everything spherical and no perturbations from other planets, it would stay there forever. Uh, however, even if you have no other planets and no perturbations, uh, if it drifts a little bit away from L2, it's pulled a little further away. It's not a strong force, but a weak force. So in fact, it does need stabilizing rockets to keep it at L2. Uh, they don't have to be fired very often, and apparently you can go for, it's already been up for eight years or something like that, and they say there's enough fuel to go for a number of more years. So it doesn't need much fuel to keep itself in place, but it, it does have to actively be restored. The stereo solar stereo, there's stereo telescopes, uh, solar telescopes at that point too, or is that a different point? Um, I don't know. Uh, it doesn't matter. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. Actually, I thought that WMAP was the only thing up there now, although that many other experiments are planned for L2. But I could be wrong about that. Okay, this is the beautiful graph. This is my favorite graph in the whole world. Uh, this is the graph of the temperature fluctuations as seen in the microwave background as a function of their angular wavelength. Uh, remember that what you're actually seeing is just an image on the sky. So when we talk about a wavelength, it's not measured in, s in meters or light years, it's measured in angles. Uh, you see a little blip that could be you know, five degrees across. Uh, so you can, f you can effectively Fourier transform that, you can decompose it into uh, definite wavelengths and make a plot of what the intensity is as a function of the angular wavelength of the fluctuation. Uh, and the uh, dots are what are measured. And the dots up to about here, I guess, are measured by WMAP. Uh, and then the circles, squares, and smaller circles, which are on the right here, are measured by other experiments. Uh, at very short wavelengths, uh, ground-based experiments do better than WMAP. The big advantage of WMAP is that I can see the whole sky. Which it does, which is very important for measuring large angular wavelengths. Uh, and this red curve uh, is the prediction of uh, an inflationary model including dark energy uh, in the calculation. And as you see, it's absolutely gorgeous effect uh, to all those points with all the little wiggles. That was a theoretical predicted curve. Uh, the honest thing to say is that uh, what's theoretically predicted is a. Uh, uh, a calculation which depends on parameters, uh, and I should try to explain how my, what, what's being fit and what's being predicted ab initio. Uh, one thing which is certainly just being fit and not predicted at all is the overall height of the curve. And the height of this curve was just adjusted to fit the data as well as possible. Uh, inflation does not yet tell us uh, how high the, these peaks should be. Um, but Beyond that, inflation in principle would predict exactly everything about the rest of the curve, except that it has evolved over time. So one does have to put in parameters uh, that describe the conditions under which these fluctuations have evolved since inflation. So in particular, what goes into these curves are a number for the amount of dark energy, uh, and that really is fit to this data. This data is their best measurement of how much dark energy there is. Uh, one also puts in how much uh, baryonic matter there is, how much ordinary matter, in form of protons, neutrons, and electrons. Uh, that number, however, can also be measured from the nucleosynthesis uh, calculations by fitting them to the data, and they agree perfectly. Uh, so if one didn't know it, if one didn't fit it, but put it in from other knowledge, it would, wouldn't change anything. Uh, one is also putting in a number for the temperature of the cosmic background radiation, which one measures independently and doesn't need to fit to this. Um, one puts in, um, well, there's one other fairly important number that gets put into this. Uh, there's, um, there's a number associated with how much uh, fog there is between the cosmic background radiation and us, uh, what, how much scattering there is, and that number is, is fit to this data. Uh, but nonetheless, um, it's hard to get this fit with anything else, and in fact that's exactly First of all, I say Eureka. Uh, and then uh, this is the curve that, uh, that, that helps to better answer your question. You can ask, suppose you had competing theories. How well can they do uh, in reproducing this data? Uh, and the answer is very, very badly. Um, if we had the theory that we had a decade ago where the universe was open, that's this yellowish curve here, which, as you see, is way, way off from the data. 
Uh, if we had inflation but without dark energy, and this, that's this lightest green <coughs> curve, uh, and that fits the data very, very badly. Uh, and then another theory that was popular about, I don't know, eight years ago or so, uh, was the theory that uh, the density fluctuations came about due to uh, what are called cosmic defects. Uh, cosmic strings are one possibility. We've also talked about things called textures, uh, which produce a very similar curve, uh, and none of those produce anything that looks like the spectrum that we get out of inflation. Uh, so it's very hard to imagine anything that will do this, although I do need to confess uh, there is one theory uh, called the ekperiodic theory, uh, the ekperiodic cyclic model, uh, due to Paul Steinhardt and Neil Turok, uh, which, uh, according to its authors, gets exactly the same thing as inflation. Uh, so, so far, they're indistinguishable. Yes? Uh, an angular wavelength and degrees, in other words, you, you're looking on the left scale, you, you're looking at a very w wide view and looking at the variations there, and then a a as you look at narrower views? Yeah. Uh, on the right, uh, where the angular wavelength is small, it means that the, you you're have bright, dark, bright, dark, bright, dark, bright, dark. Mm -hmm. And on the left, where the angular wavelength is 180 degrees, uh, that means dark over there, light over there, dark over there, light over there, sort of divided into quadrants. So, so uh, when you're looking at very small, small degrees, uh, you, you're taking a, a great number of samples. That's right. That's right. And that's precisely why the error bars, uh, well, it's, 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 uh, the error bars get larger because it gets harder to measure. But going from here to there, the error bars are getting smaller for that reason, that there's more samples. And then starting about here, the difficulty of measuring these various things becomes more, more important to them. Yes? Are there ongoing ground-based efforts or whatever that um, are, will beat down those error bars? Yes, yes, very much so, very much. This is still a very, very active enterprise. Uh, so there are many ground-based experiments going now and uh, getting set up to be done shortly. Uh, and in addition, there's another satellite experiment called Planck, which is supposed to be launched probably at the end of this coming summer which will make much more precise measurements from space uh, than WMAP has. So these curves will certainly get more precise. And they get more precise sort of monthly. Uh, the WMAP team, in fact, just about uh, one month ago, at the beginning of March, uh, announced uh, a new set of data. They first announced their one-year data, later they announced their three-year data, they just recently announced their five-year data. Uh, and I guess I even have that to show you. Uh, th this curve, the curve I showed you here, only has the three-year data. Uh, this is the five-year data. It's unfortunately not plotted on the same scale, so it's hard to directly compare them. Uh, but by and large, what's happened is the error bars have gotten smaller, and it still fits the theoretical curve beautifully. Uh, it really is a remarkable success uh, for theory in a place where you wouldn't necessarily expect the theory to, to be nearly so successful. Yeah. Ground-based data, primarily radio. Uh, well, it's in the microwave, okay. so uh, it's on the it's borderline of what you call radio. It's not optical, no. <coughs> no, it's, it's, uh, this is uh, um, uh, uh, wavelengths of the order of a mil few millimeters. <coughs> okay. 